So here we have some missing number problems for multiplying or dividing by 10 or 100. And the way that we know that the missing numbers must be 10 or 100 is because if we look at the digits in our question, or at least the digits that are not zero, they're the same in the question and the answer. So for this first question, if we ignore the place values, we have an 8 and a 3, and in our answer, we have an 8 and a 3. In this question, we have an 8, and in our answer, we also have an 8. So that tells us that we must have multiplied or divided by 10 or 100, or any value that has its own place value. So if you think to our place value columns, we have a tens column, we have a hundredths column, and also multiplying or dividing by a thousand or any other place value column won't change the digits. That's because when we multiply or divide by 10 or 100, the digits move, but they don't change. So first, we have 8.3 times what is 830. Now the way I like to solve these is to write both numbers out, one below the other, but with the place values lined up. And the way that we make sure the place values are lined up is to copy down the decimal point. Remember, if we have a whole number, we really have an invisible decimal point on the end. So we can write 830, so our answer, with a decimal point on the end. Then we can see easily what's happened to the digits. So here we can see that this 8 has moved two squares across, and so have the other digits in our question. And when we move the digits two squares to the left, we've multiplied by 100, because 100 has two zeros, or because multiplying by 100 is like multiplying by 10, and then by 10 again. Next, we have 0 0.08, so we can write out the number, and our answer is 0 0.8, so we can write 0 0.8 below with the place values, so with the decimal points lined up. Now here, we can see that the digits have moved one square to the left, so that means the number has been multiplied by 10, because 10 has one zero, so digits move one square. Now we have 0 0.83, and we've multiplied to make 83. So we can write 83 with the decimal point on the end. So the decimal points are lined up, which means our tens, ones, tenths, and hundredths place value columns are in the right place. Here we can see that the digits have moved two squares, which means we've multiplied by 100. Now we have some missing number division problems. Again, we know that the answer will either be 10 or 100, because if we look at the non-zero digits in the question, we have an 8 and a 3 in our dividend, and an 8 and a 3 in our quotient. So we can write out the numbers one below the other with the decimal points, so with the place values lined up. And here, we can see that the digits have moved one square to the right. And when we move the digits one square to the right, we've divided by 10, because that has one zero. Now, 83 divided by what equals 8.3? So, we can write out 83 and put our decimal point on the end, because it's a whole number, and then we can write 8.3 directly below with the decimal point lined up. Now we can see that the digits have moved one square to the right, so we've divided by 10. Now 83 divided by what is 0 0.83? We can write 83 and put our decimal point on the end, then write the answer directly below with the decimal points lined up. We can see that here, the digits have moved two squares to the right, and that means that we've divided by 100, because in 100 we have two zeros, and the digits have moved two squares. Dividing by 100 is like dividing by 10, and then by 10 again, and that's why the digits move two squares to the right.